2012. 2012. Oh, so the Mayans were right. <laughs> right. 2012, the platform announced an update to the discovery system uh, designed to identify the videos people actually want to watch by prioritizing videos that hold attention throughout, as well as increasing the amount of time a user spends on the platform overall. YouTube could assure advertisers that it was providing a valuable, high-quality experience for people. Yeah. So um, that that's beginning of the end. Yeah. So 2012 on YouTube's timeline, I mean, um, you know, the... Twitter and Facebook world, I think, introduces the retweet and reshare buttons in the 2009 to 2010 kind of time period. So you end up with this world where the things that we're most paying attention to are based on algorithms choosing for us. And so the sort of deeper argument that's in the film that I'm not sure everyone picks up on is these technology systems have taken control of human choice. They've taken control of humanity because they're controlling the information that all of us are getting. Right. Think about every election. Like, um, I think of Facebook as kind of a voting machine, but it's a sort of indirect voting machine because it controls the information for four years that your entire, entire society is getting. And then everyone votes based on that information. Now, you could say, well, hold on, radio and television were there and were partisan before that. But actually, TV, um, radio and TV are often getting their news stories from Twitter. And Twitter is rec is recommending things based on these algorithms. So mm. when you control the information that an entire population is getting, you're controlling their choices. I mean, literally in military theory, if I want to screw up your military, I want to control the information that it's getting. I want to confuse the enemy. And that information funnel is the very thing that's been corrupted. And it's like the Flint water supply for our minds. Talking to a friend yesterday. You better take a screenshot of this if you want to go look it up. Here's one of those articles. Facebook is launching its own retweet button. Ellis Hamburger, January 30th, 2014, at 2.26 p.m. Eastern Time. Under the surface of paper, Facebook's new mobile app that's half newsfeed, half newsreader, lies an important new feature that works just like Twitter's well-known retweet. At the bottom of any post inside paper, you can tap an arrow symbol to bring up a share dialog, and then tap reshare to share the post with your friends and followers. Tapping reshare is as simple as tapping retweet on Twitter. Reshare is simpler to share on your own timeline option on Facebook website and the share now option in Facebook's mobile apps, but it's marketably different because of its one tap simplicity and its use of this familiar retweet symbol. Share your own share on your own timeline, for example, asks you to write a comment before sharing a post you've found. While tapping reshare is as simple as tapping retweet on Twitter, perhaps the with a more literal name and symbol alongside it, people will use that feature more as Facebook seems to be betting. <clears throat> Reshare is far from the first time Facebook has imitated or cloned a Twitter feature. The company recently launched hashtags and trending topics, as well as at mentions to links to friends' profiles. We don't have screenshots of Reshare since we only had a brief glimpse of paper when Facebook demoed it for us, but check back on Monday when the app launches for continued coverage. The company says it has no current plans to explicitly bring reshare to Facebook on other platforms yet. Here's the article they were referencing. It's on blog.hotsuite. H O O T S U I T E dot com. How does the YouTube algorithm work? How does the YouTube algorithm work? A guide to getting more views. Looking to increase your YouTube video views? Step 1. Find out what's new with the YouTube algorithm and how it evaluates your content. The YouTube algorithm decides what people watch on YouTube 70% of the time. And according to Pew Research Center, 81% of American YouTube users say they regularly watch videos recommended by the algorithm. If you're a creator working on getting more YouTube views or a brand building out your YouTube marketing strategy, the platform's recommendation algorithm counts for a lot. So how do you optimize your channel and videos to work with it? Not against it. YouTube usually isn't known for being super transparent with creators or advertisers about how the proverbial sausage is made. So in this article we are going to take a look at the history of YouTube's priorities when it comes to helping viewers discover new videos. We are going to lay out how the algorithm works, as well as all the latest YouTube algorithm changes for 2020 bonus download the free 30-day plan to grow your YouTube following fast. A daily workbook of challenges that will help you kickstart your YouTube channel growth and track your success. Get real results after one month. A brief history of the YouTube algorithm. YouTube's first video was uploaded in 2005, 15 years later. People are uploading 500 hours of video to the platform every minute. How do 2 billion users find what they want to watch? The short answer is that it's changed over the years. But here's the long answer too. 2005 to 2012. 
View count AK. Clicks for the first seven years YouTube rewarded videos that got clicks, rather than the ones that kept users engaged obviously this system had a tendency to show people a lot of clickbait, misleading titles and thumbnails proliferated. Users would click, but then feel tricked, probably a little annoyed, and then abandon videos partway through. Eventually, YouTube realized that their user experience was going down the drain and changed tax. 2012. Watch time aka view duration. In 2012, the platform announced an update to the discovery system, designed to identify the videos people actually want to watch. By prioritizing videos that hold attention throughout, as well as increasing the amount of time a user spends on the platform overall YouTube could assure advertisers that it was providing a valuable, high-quality experience for people. Meanwhile, YouTube was also encouraging creators to stop fussing, with algorithm optimization i.e. making videos shorter to get a higher retention rate, or making them longer in order to rack up more watch time instead, as it still does today. YouTube encouraged people to just make videos people want to watch. 2016. Machine Learning AK, the algorithm, in 2016, YouTube released a white paper that made some waves. In it, product engineers describe the role of deep neural networks and machine learning in the platform's recommendation system. Source, Deep Neural Networks for YouTube Recommendations, 2016. Of course, for all the impressive jargon, this white paper wasn't a tell-all. You can read it, but even if you understand it, or get your smart friend to explain it to you, it's not the equivalent of Coca-Cola's secret recipe. It's more like if Coca. Cola announced that the reason their beverage is so tasty is because it undergoes a carbonation process and also there is sugar in it. At this point, we still don't know that many details about what's under the YouTube algorithm's hood, but we do know that it tracks viewers' perceived satisfaction to create an addictive, personalized stream of recommendations, 2016 to 2020, borderline content, demonetization, and brand safety. For the past few years, YouTube has faced plenty of questions about the type of videos its algorithm surfaces and promotes, or doesn't. According to YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki, YouTube is taking its responsibilities seriously and trying to balance a broad, fair range of opinions with making sure that outright dangerous information doesn't spread. For instance, YouTube says that algorithm changes in early 2019 have led to 70% less watch time for borderline content. Borderline content is defined as content that doesn't quite violate the platform's community guidelines, but is harmful or misleading. It's a complicated issue because it touches every issue, from white supremacy to the coronavirus. For instance, in March 2020, YouTube creators say the platform was demonetizing videos that so much as alluded to the existence of the coronavirus. YouTube's position, meanwhile, is that it wants to support a diversity of opinions, i.e., how governments should respond to the coronavirus but not the dangerous ones, i.e., videos saying the virus is a hoax, or that drinking hand sanitizer will cure it. Wojcicki announced that when people come to YouTube searching for coronavirus topics, on average 94% of the videos they see in the top 10 results come from high-authority channels. Regardless of where you stand, the developments are ongoing, so this is an important discussion for both creators and advertisers to keep informed about, if you're a creator. Remember that just because the algorithm is rewarding the content you make with high visibility and ad revenue doesn't mean YouTube won't turn around and demonetize your channel or video if your content crosses the line into something. Advertisers find objectionable. Meanwhile, advertisers need to know that their sneaker ads aren't funding anti-vaxxers or conspiracy theorists. The YouTube algorithm in its current form is designed to demonetize borderline content, mostly to protect brands. YouTube says says it might never be able to guarantee 100% brand safety. How does the YouTube algorithm work in 2020? According to YouTube, the algorithm is basically a real-time feedback loop that tailors videos to each viewer's different interests It decides which videos will get suggested to individual users. The algorithm's goals are twofold. Find the right video for each viewer and get viewers to keep watching. Therefore, the algorithm is watching user behavior as closely as it watches video performance. The two most important places the algorithm impacts are search results and recommendation streams. How the YouTube algorithm influences search results unsurprisingly. The videos you get when you search carnivorous houseplants will be different from the videos. I get when I search carnivorous houseplants. Search results are based on factors like comma, your video's metadata title, description, keywords, and how well those match the user's query, your video's engagement likes, comments, watch time, how the YouTube algorithm influences recommended videos. The recommendation stream is a twofold process for the algorithm. First, it ranks videos by assigning them a score based on performance analytics data. Scroll down for our list of all known factors. Second, it matches videos to people based on their watch history and what similar people have watched. The idea is not to identify good videos, but to match viewers with videos that they want to watch. The end goal is that they spend as much time as possible on the platform and therefore see as many ads as possible. For the record, there are three other places the algorithm makes a big impact. Comma your YouTube homepage, trending videos, your subscriptions, your notifications, how YouTube determines the algorithm, while we don't work at Google. Here's a running list of all the different factors that YouTube has mentioned in its various public discussions of the algorithm over the years. When it ranks a video, the algorithm looks at performance, whether people click on a video aka impressions versus views thumbnail, and title are important here. Comma, how much time people spend watching a video, watch time our attention, how many likes, likes, comments or shares a video gets aka engagement. How quickly a video's popularity snowballs, or doesn't. This is called view velocity, rate of growth. How new a video is, new videos may get extra attention in order to give them a chance to snowball. How often a channel uploads new videos. Comma, how much time people spend on the platform after watching a video session time. When it matches a video to a potential viewer, the algorithm looks at personalization. Comma, which channels and topics have they watched in the past? What have they engaged with in the past? How much time do they spend watching? How many times has this video already been surfaced for this person? What don't they watch? 
7 Tips to Improve Your Organic Reach on YouTube Here's our list of tight and true methods for playing nice with the algorithm 1. Optimize your video description text contrary to popular belief. That block of text underneath your video isn't just a place to link to your socials. Although you should definitely do that too. It also helps the algorithm surface your video when users are searching for your topic. So make sure you front load the first sentence with a clear, keyword-focused description of your video. As in the above examples, make you sure you use natural language, not keyword salad. Focus on one or two keywords, and repeat them in both your description and title. For more detail, check out our complete guide to SEO-optimized YouTube descriptions, including tips on zeroing in on your keywords too. If something works rinse and repeat, building leverage on YouTube, as these five unexpectedly interesting YouTube channels have learned, requires paying attention to what your audience wants. That means paying attention to your analytics, but also your gut. The YouTube algorithm wants to give people more of what they've liked in the past. Experiment skillfully, take feedback from your audience, give everyone time to adjust, source, dad, how do I? For instance, this local dad started a channel during the pandemic lockdown, and his premise, answering questions people might usually ask their dad, if, like him, they don't have one, has racked up 2.4 million subscribers in two months. It's a unique, earnest and emotional value offering, and it's extra impressive because this channel succeeded in a content vertical, that is, DIY how-to videos, that seem pretty much saturated. Also note that he reads picture books once a month, which leads us to conclude that the algorithm rewards those who make their viewers weep. 3. Publish often, quantity of videos, and frequency of upload, is an important factor for the algorithm, and YouTube's home screen especially. It's the personalized list of new and interesting videos that's kind of like Instagram's Explore page. If you can increase quantity without losing quality, go for it. The more videos you publish, the better chance you'll have of hitting the right nerve. Maybe you can turn that one big hit into a series. Or you can introduce a new, low-effort weekly feature that fits into your brand's established niche, like a Tuesday reaction video or a Wednesday study with me session or a Thursday Twitch stream. 4. Make your videos public when your audience is watching. Recency is an important ranking factor for every social media algorithm we can name. The Instagram algorithm, the Twitter algorithm, the Facebook algorithm, and YouTube is no exception. YouTube's notifications feature pings your subscribers when you upload a video, and it's definitely most effective if that happens when they're looking for something new to watch. But on the whole, we recommend taking a look at your YouTube analytics to pick the optimal time of day or week to drop your newest masterpiece. In many cases, this also means scheduling your YouTube videos ahead of time. 5. Keep viewers engaged throughout the whole video. Another key performance metric for the algorithm is view duration. You might see advice that advocates for making your videos shorter or longer, but really, just make them as interesting and fun to watch as you possibly can. For instance, the 6. Minute video of a bratty raven chatting at her best friend is solid across the board. Our educated guess is that not just clickability but retention aka, view duration helped this video's views skyrocket. This was the channel's breakout video, hitting 4 million views when their average is usually well under a million. Fable the raven. Did you know ravens can talk? Indefinite time, elapsed time. Zero seconds. Photo image of, Fable the raven. Did you know ravens can talk? More. Play. Source. Falcon Ryan me. Once you've charmed people to watch through to the end. You can then go ahead and use end cards and or playlists. See number 6 in our list of ways to get more YouTube views, to suggest that they watch your next video. Because no one needs a recommendation algorithm if people trust your recommendations, right? Right. 6. Engage with your community. We'll never stop saying this. Reply to your comments. Talk to your people. Just remember that the algorithm knows if you're having meaningful conversations or just paying lip service to bump up your vanity metrics. If you're in the position of having too many people to respond to, you can always do an appreciation video, like this video, where this illiterate fox gets to hear all the compliments people type to him. Reading Finnegan Fox comment comments, face with tears of joy. Indefinite time elapsed time, zero seconds, photo image of. Reading Finnegan Fox compliment comments face with tears of joy. More play source, save a fox. If no one sends you tens of thousands of compliments every week about the cute noises you make, that's okay too. You can skip the video and manage conversations for your channel using Hootsuite. Like so how to engage your YouTube community using Hootsuite. Old indefinite time elapsed time, zero seconds, photo image of. How to engage your YouTube community using Hootsuite, old more. Play 7. Turn viewers into subscribers. According to YouTube, your channel subscribers provide a bunch of important initial signals that help dictate the success of your video. In other words, these fans are the testing ground if they love it. The algorithm is more likely to show the video to new eyeballs for more tips on how to get free YouTube subscribers. Check out our list. Grow your YouTube audience faster with Hootsuite. Schedule videos and moderate comments in the same place you manage all your other social networks. Try it free today. Get started.